ओम ज्ञान तिमिरंधश्य ज्ञान अंजन श्लाकाय चक्षुर्मिलित जैन तस्म श्री गुरु नम मुखम करोति वाचाला पंगुम लंघयते गिरी यदम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारण परमानंद माधुम श्री चैतन्यश्वर नमो विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण प्रस्थाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चाता जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वर्षादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण महामंत्र की जय कलयुग पावन धर्म हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जय इसकोन फाउंडर आचार्य हरि जय वैंग जय प्रभुपाद की जय सम्बल भक्त वृंद की जय हरे कृष्ण चैप्टर ट्वेल्व टाइटल डिवोशनल सर्विस सो दिस चैप्टर इज राइट आफ्टर कृष्ण सोड इज यूनिवर्सल फॉर्म and at the end of the chapter 11 krishna said that his form can be seen only by ananya bhakta so this chapter is talking about ananya bhakti pure devotional service so 20 verses and we finished uh, for seven verses in last class which is arjun is asking who is better पर्सनल और इमपर्सनल पर्सनल इज भगवान फॉर्म कृष्ण से इज दैट इज पर्सनल फॉर्म इज बेटर सो ब्राह्मण परमात्मा एंड भगवान इन दैट प्रोसेस वी टॉक्ट अबाउट द डिग्री ऑफ रियलाइजेशन दे हैव अबाउट द एब्सोलूट ट्रूथ कृष्ण से इज दैट वेन वन रिचेज अप्रोचेज मी as person then at the course of time their understanding is complete so some of you were confused and i wanted to show one slide so i'll show that today so once it's confirmed that bhagwan is the ultimate reality then krishna talks about <clears throat> how to reach to that bhagwan and the process is bhakti so supremacy of the bhakti is mentioned and then a person who has received the bhakti or as he or she is receiving the bhakti they have <coughs> multiple qualities so 31 qualities are mentioned here that develops and that is very dear to krishna so first seven verses talks about supremacy of the bhagwan and then next five verses will give the process to achieve that bhagwan which is bhakti and then what are the quality uh developing in the devotee when they are engaged in the process of bhakti so this chapter is talking about भगवान भक्ति एंड भक्ता डिवोटिस सो वाइल वी आर ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द पर्सनल फॉर्म ऑफ द लॉर्ड आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस कंसेप्ट सो देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस अनावरिता कॉन्शियसनेस संकुचिता कॉन्शियसनेस एंड मुकुलिता कॉन्शियसनेस अनावरिता कॉन्शियसनेस is a restricted consciousness such as plants plants do have life but they cannot express the emotion they cannot talk but higher than anavrita consciousness is sankuchita consciousness contracted consciousness so it's developed than anavrita but it's not fully developed that's animal and then higher than 
animals is the consciousness of human being, which is called Mukulita. So human also has uh, Mukulita consciousness, Viksita consciousness and Purna Viksita consciousness. So Purna Viksita consciousness is the one which is fully developed. And then that person is ready to take the process of Bhakti. So Mukulita consciousness is the consciousness where human being has ability to interact on higher degree, such as they can express their emotion, they can understand others' emotion, they can communicate their emotional feeling. All of that can happen. So human being can take multiple paths. And the lowest path is Karmakanda path, where they have sense gratification as number one priority. Or they are engaged in pious, impious type of activity, or they promote atheism, or they take part in charity type of thing. But all of that is done for the pleasure of senses. And higher than that is mind. Higher than senses is mind. Mind has thinking, feeling, and willing. And higher than mind is intelligence. Intelligence has acceptance and reject, rejection or rejectance ability. Mind can think, feel, and will. So mind will say, let's go on 10 story building and jump. Buddhi will say, no, it's not good. You'll die. So Buddhi is higher than mind. And higher than intelligence is soul. Soul is very, very subtle. And it's higher than mind and Buddhi. And higher than soul is demigods. And higher than demigods, demigods are personal. Persons higher than demigods is Brahman. So a realization of demigod and Brahman. Brahman realization is higher than realizing demigod. And higher than Brahman realization is Paramatma realization, super soul, soul of the soul. And then highest most realization is Bhagwan realization. So Brahman realization is shut the feature. That's the point I was trying to make. Eternity feature. Impersonal understanding of the Supreme Lord is eternity feature of the Lord. Paramatma is Sat and Chit. Shad is eternity. Chit is knowledge potency. So, eternity and knowledge potency is understanding of Paramatma. And Bhagwan is both eternity knowledge and not only eternity and knowledge but bliss such as Krishna has blissful relationship with his bhakta with his devotees we see that in his pastime of braja gopa gopis their Krishna's mother father all of that Relationship. So that's the point I was trying to make. So Brahman realization is achieved by Jnana Yoga. Ashtanga Yoga also leads to Brahman realization, but higher uh, once you get in their dhyan process, then they meditate on the Paramatma also. But Bhagwan realization comes only through the process of bhakti. So this slide is very important. Because we just finished the concept of impersonal versus personal. And also we are going to talk about bhakti. So when we are talking about bhakti, our goal is to understand Bhagwan, Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. So this is a slide we have to carry in our mind. So let's move to the series of verses. Hare Krishna Prabhu, in the yeah. last slide, when you say demigod is higher than soul, what do you, I mean? What, perceiving, what perceiving. So perception of soul 
and perception of demigod. So demigod's positions are, or understanding demigod is higher than understanding soul or perceiving soul. So in the process of awakening the consciousness, consciousness of soul and demigod, demigod comes higher on the ranking, like such as knowing Lord Shiva's or Lord Brahma, or Lord Indra. They are subtler, more subtler than knowing soul. So that's the purpose. Whatever you see next on this line, it gets from gross to subtler, subtler, and subtler, and subtler, and subtler, and subtlest. So Bhagawan is subtle most understanding. Bhagwan realization is very, very subtle, subtlest realization. It's not easy because soul and super soul. Realizing soul is very difficult. We are this body. That's what people think. We are not this. We are not anything else. We are the body. So acting on the platform of soul is much, much, much subtler than thinking that we are this body. And realizing demigod is even subtler than realizing Atma. Brahman realization is transcendental. Then higher than that, this Brahmatma realization, highest most. Yeah, uh, I was thinking that Bhagavan. demigods are also living entities. Like they yeah, have so but, but their position is superior than conditioned soul. Okay, yeah. I mean, They're they... superior, right? Right. Until you become yeah. devotee. Okay. Mm -hmm. You are right. They are also living beings, mm -hmm. but uh, they are empowered living beings, you know? Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Lord Shiva. Mm -hmm. Is it easy to understand him? No. No, right? So that's the point. Mm -hmm. Lord Shiva considered uh, like a demigod in Iskand. Huh? Um. Oh, sorry. Um. Is Lord Shiva considered a demigod in Iskand? It's not Iskand. It's not about Iskand. It's about having the Vedic understanding. So Shiva is in charge of mode of ignorance. So if one tries to keep their understanding limited up to mode of ignorance, then Lord Shiva is the controller of it. He controls the mode of ignorance. So he is supremely powerful when it comes to understanding the ignorance. Or when we try to even go higher beyond ignorance, then there is passion. And in that passion, uh, the understanding of Brahman, Lord Brahma, is ultimate. So it depends which mode we are dealing with. But the understanding of Bhagwan is ultimate understanding, higher than the understanding of any guna or gunapati, the master of the guna. So <clears throat> process that's given one of the thing that many time we intermix and that confusion stays up to very last stage which is the process that one is engaged is based on one's adhikar and <clears throat> bhakti process living being takes only when it's blessed by devotee by bhakta and then bhakta help us understand something much much higher than the common basic understanding so lord shiva is not an ordinary person vaishnava yathashambhu he is the 
supremost passion but he is in charge of certain guna and in that perspective he is not superior than vishnu or superior than lord sri krishna so this is uh, the paradigm of understanding it's not about iskon or it's not about any institution it's about having the clear understanding of vedic teaching but if one reads uh, shiv puran or any scripture that will help elevate one consciousness beyond more of tamoguna then in that a scripture lord shiva will be presented as authority superior authority you have any follow up questions mother ji you have anything follow up no not at this time prabhu ji <laughs> Do you understand Thank what you. I was trying to say? Yeah, I understand what you're trying to say, Pavuji. Thank you, Mante. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So it's mostly, you know, adhikar. There is, and we are going to talk about that. Krishna is going to talk very soon. You ask question at the right time. You know, in first six chapter, of Bhagavad Gita, karma kandi, sakam karma, niskam karma, niskam karma type one, niskam karma type two. ज्ञान योगा ध्यान योगा ऑल ऑफ दीज स्टेप्स और प्रोसेस आर गिवेन बेस्ड ऑन द श्रद्धा अधिकार ऑफ द लिविंग बीइंग बट फाइनली कृष्णा टेक्स वन टू द पॉइंट वेर ही सेज दैट भक्ति इज दिव्यम एंड शुड बी द अल्टीमेट गोल सो दैट डजेंट मीन that one cannot process one cannot practice other uh, process if one sardha is in that process then one can practice that so based on adhikar one's understanding one's advancement one accept the process but uh, reality is that that we are really not uh, too much concerned about uh, who is superior the real goal at this point is how we can advance in the consciousness how our consciousness can evolve and that is why being very very focused to the point like for example i can give you one example i was born in in hindu family right we all are born in hindu family i can tell you that i would not have made this much understanding about god and consciousness and changes that happen in my personality if i would have just followed things the way it was all around in all directions everywhere east is good west is good south is good north is good up is good low is good any direction you go is good but one of the reason that i am here now talking this because i very focused understanding the science of krishna and that through the chanting name of krishna help me come where i am today so following a process that's coming from our acharya or coming from a realized soul might not make sense in the beginning but once we follow it then at some point we ourselves can witness that yes it has really worked for us but that also doesn't happen unless and until there is a uh, mercy bhakti can happen or bhakti can bhakti can come in our life when somebody 
is merciful upon us. Otherwise, whatever adhikara, and adhikara is basically the faith, basic faith. Basic faith that we have will give us a process. But bhakta will help, you know, go beyond our normal faith. You know, we'll basically say that, like, you know, you have a telescope. Your eye can see up to some distance, but when somebody will put telescope on your eyes, you can see far. So that's what bhakta does. A devotee of Lord will put telescope on our eyes and say that telescope, just look into telescope. And then you can see, oh, I can see sun and I can see moon. So that's what it is. So we are not saying that uh, Lord Shiva is not a powerful personality, but he is in charge of a certain guna. But bhakti helps us go beyond guna. Tregunna vishayo veda nastargunna bhava arjuna. Arjuna, come beyond this guna. Was it making sense? What did I say? That's interesting which you say that, Prabhu, about the telescope. Today we were listening to Prabhupada's lecture and she, he was saying that Krishna consciousness is the eye opener. <laughs> uh, it opens your eyes so that you can, you know, see God by the regulative process. Yes. By, by purification, once we get purified, yes. yeah, we get, will get to see the God. <laughs> yes. All right. Close eyes versus open eyes. Open eyes versus telescope. You are right. That's how it is. So bhakta, bhakti comes from bhakta, a devotee of Lord. We have all learned from our acharyas because they know what is ultimate truth. So from here, very beautiful segment is going to start. Very beautiful. So pay attention to this. So after telling Arjun that personal feature of the Lord is superior. Krishna is going to help understand Arjun how to get there. So, what are the different stages of bhakti? So, very first verse he says, Maya eva mana adhats adhatsava mai budhim niveshya niveshya si mai eva he says that uh, fix your mind on me exclusively by remembering me always. But if you cannot do that, if you cannot fix your mind always remembering me, then my buddhim then use your intelligence or fix your intelligence in me. So these two types of engagement, fixing mind and always remembering Krishna is called Asmarana Atmika Bhakti. Vishnu Chavita could say and when one fix intelligence in Krishna, that's called manana atmika bhakti. So, we will hear later that sharvanam, mananam, nididhyasnam, and asmarnam. In a very concise way, the steps of bhakti is presented as first saranam here. Hearing is emphasized. And as you are hearing, contemplate on your hearing. Means understand the hearing. And then nididhyasnam, apply it. And when saranam is perfected, mananam, meditation on that Saranam is perfected and when it's applied then Ashmarnam remembrance of Krishna comes. 
अस्मर्तव्य सततम विष्णु विस्मर्तव्य न जात शुद्ध ऑलवेज रिमेम्बर कृष्णा एंड नेवर फॉर गेट कृष्णा सो द फर्स्ट वन इज अस्मरणा आत्मिका भक्ति वेर कृष्णा इज से आई जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू कनेक्ट द डॉट सो दैट यू अंडरस्टैंड कृष्णा इज सेंग दैट ऑलवेज रिमेम्बर मी always you know so here he says that eva focus your mind remembering that personal form not the impersonal form please note that down krishna is saying that engage in asmarnam of my personal form atmika bhakti atmika means internal so this is internal quality of a devotee that is always you know i am in the remembrance of krishna or not it's internal you cannot see so asmarna atmika bhakti always remembering in krishna but is very high it's the result of perfected sarvanam perfected mananam perfected nididhyasnam So it's not easy. So one may not be able to do asmarnaatmi ka bhakti. Then Krishna says, "Fix your intelligence on me. That's mananaatmi ka bhakti, and that's also internal. But both of these are very high. When Krishna says that, fix your intelligence on me." mayai buddhim nivesya nivesya you know they say that you know there is a word nivesa where you want to invest your money right where you want to do the nivesh have you heard the word nivesh so krishna says buddhi nivesh karo you know use your intelligence invest your intelligence mai in me you know mai eva mana your mind invest in me you know life insurance they say that nivesh you know invest in this plan and that plan krishna is saying that the highest most investment you can do is that you will always remember me but if you cannot remember which is at the higher stage you use your intelligence so even if you cannot put your intelligence all the time remembering me you know what you need to do ata chitam samadhatum nasaknosi mai sthiram abhyas jogena tato mam ichha patum dhyanan jaya dhanan jaya dhanan jaya mam ichha patum dhanan jaya dhanan jaya arjun so if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation then abhyas jogena tato do practice for that remember the devotee is very important do practice and this practice what is this practice sadhana bhakti we are engaged in sadhana bhakti do sadhana bhakti so three types of bhakti and all of these three are called internal bhakti internal inside someone is internally very advanced top one is asmarnatmika which is always remembering and then mananatmika using the intelligence if we cannot fix our mind and intelligence on krishna then krishna says abhyas jogena by abhyas by practice because by practice by abhyas slowly and slowly and slowly when purification will happen you'll be able to come to the higher stage 
So very important concept here presented, sadhana bhakti. And then manatmika, mananatmika bhakti. And then ashmanatmika bhakti is presented here. Krishna says, abhyas. So this chapter is very be beautiful chapter because Krishna starts the highest most uh, <clears throat> requirement, which is Asma Natmika Bhakti. And then he says, if you cannot do it, then be Mananatmika Bhakti. If you cannot do that, then do Avyas for that. Okay. Avyas for fixing your mind and intelligence upon me. So these three stages are internal stage. But one may not be able to do anything internal. Then Krishna says, Avyas api asamartho vashi. Sanskrit asamarth. Mat karma paramo bhava. Madartham api karmani purvan shidhim avapsasi. So, if you are not even ready to do a vyas, then mat karma paramo bhava. You engage working for me. Paramo bhava, thinking that your action is going to please me. Please act for me. If you cannot practice sadhana bhakti, then just try to perform your work for my pleasure. Mat karma pramo bhava. Though your mind is not on me. So, sadhana, this abhyas yoga talks about little perfected stage of sadhana. When we have, you know, come higher than our shraddha. We have some nistha. But in the very beginning, we are engaged in some action. But our mind might not be thinking that this is for pleasure of Krishna. Action is for transformation. We act. Oh, I have some services to do. And we are too attached to service, not knowing that the goal of the service is to please Krishna. So you cannot think that, but that's okay. Act for me, Krishna says. So you can see how he is, you know, uh, coming down. Athai etad, athad etad api asakto vasi, again, kartum mad yoga maasritaha, Sarva karma falatyagam tata guru yatha yatat mavan yatat mavan. So he says that kartum mad yogam asritaha atha aitad api asakto asi. Even if you are not ready to work for me. from outside using your external engagement then sarva karma latyagam at least you act but don't be attached to the fruits of the action as niskam karma so krishna comes down to the stage of this kaam karma. So he says that, uh, first he says that Ashmanatmika Bhakti, Mananatmika Bhakti, and Abhyas Yogena. If you cannot do, if you cannot fix your mind and intelligence, practice for me. But if you cannot even practice fixing your mind and intelligence for me, then just externally work for me. But if, I, if you cannot work for me, 
then the fruits of your work. You just don't get to attach to the fruits of your action. Don't worry. What is the benefit and what is the loss? Are you going to be winner or are you going to be loser? Don't worry for that. So you can see Krishna came down into Nishkam Karmi Yoga. Then he says, Sriyohi Gyanam Abhyasaj Gyanad Dhyanam Vishishyate Dhyanat Karma Falat Tyagas Tyagat Shantir Nantaram So he says that Sriyohi Gyanam Abhyasaj Knowledge is better than Avyas. Here Avyas basically refers to externally engaging in certain activity. And higher than Gyan is Dhyan. You know that. So renunciation of fruits of work is better than meditation. So there is some switch here. So this is basically talking about Niskam Karma Yoga type 2. When one heart is feel fully purified and one is doing Niskam Karma in devotional service of Supreme Personality of Godhead. So he says that uh, merely externally engaging, you just engage. It's better to know the object of engagement, which is Jnana, right? That's the Jnana. And higher than Jnana is meditation, Dhyan. And higher than Dhyan, when you are engaged in Nishkam Karma, thinking, Krishna is the ultimate goal. If you do like that, then you will attain peace of the mind. So you can see here, you know, now through this series of verses, Krishna reversely went all the way down. So, you know, we climbed up up to six chapter. Then seven, eight talked about Pradhan Muta Bhakti. Nine, tenth talked about pure devotional service. 11, Krishna talked about who can see him. He showed his supremacy. And then in 12th chapter, he's talking about pure bhakta, who can know him. And now he is giving very nice, again, summary of the what we have talked so far. So this series of verses gives us very clear understanding. If you cannot do this, do this. If you cannot do this, do this. If you cannot do this, do this. So we can summarize here. So Mayeva Mana Adatsava. This is Asmaran Atmika Bhakti, which is Bhakti on the pure stage of love, pure devotees. So that if you cannot do that, then Manan Atmika Bhakti, fix your mind and intelligence exclusively upon Krishna. If you cannot do that, then practice the regulative principle of bhakti yoga, sadhana bhakti. If you cannot do that, then just merely work for Krishna. Don't worry. Just work for Krishna because you cannot internally do asmarna or manana or sadhana bhakti. Just externally, superficially, you engage. But you engage in doing activities which are prescribed duties. But even if you cannot do that, then work and don't get too attached to the result. Sriyohi Gyanam Abhyashat because acting with a goal is Gyan. So acting with a goal, Gyan, is better than merely acting for nothing. So at least if you karm falat tyagam, that will develop the detachment. And that detachment is attachment to our Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then that will be considered better. But if you cannot do that, then at least act with the goal. If you cannot do that, so higher than Gyan, 
Krishna says this dhyan, which is sixth chapter, because jnana will gradually develops to jnana. But if you if we cannot do the meditation also, then engage in niskam karma. So niskam karma will take one to the jnana, jnana will take us to dhyan, and then slowly he will come to the stage where he will be able to do bhakti. Tagat santir anantaram. By doing that, he will receive everlasting peace. So this is a beautiful, beautiful order has been presented here from verse 8 to verse 12, where the order of bhakti, stages of bhakti is given. And uh, you have gone through this, just some different terms, but this is this is the message where Krishna is talking about that one should exclusively endeavor to come to the stage of pure devotional service. Because Bhagwan, for me, is situated, you know, he has proven that Bhagwan is the goal, then he is giving the process. Okay? And then after that, he will talk what is the symptom of those personality who have gone through this process and advanced in the process of bhakti. So any question before we move to next section? Prabhuji, ask the question. Prabhu, this if we draw a yoga ladder, I mean, this set of verses can be also this call it yeah. yoga ladder, bhakti yes. ladder, right? Yeah. So if we're drawing a yoga ladder, I mean, I'm trying to draw it. I mean, the last uh, 12th verse slightly confuses me because initially it says, okay, you have to fix your mind upon me, fix your intelligence upon me, right? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Gyan, if you cannot do that, then uh, no, try to fix your mind upon me by regulative principles. Abhyasa yogena tato. And then, uh, then mat karma parma bhavat. Uh, I mean, give the results of your action. Yeah. Which is in the tenth verse. Yeah. Um, and then in the sarva karma falat tyagam. That is, if you cannot do that, then do tyag. So this tyag, which is there in the eleventh verse, is it um, tyag one? And the again, which is uh, referred in twelve verse so, two. Is in two. verse number 10, hmm. it says that work for Krishna. It's very higher stage. We are not working for Krishna. Right? Right. So Krishna says that if you cannot work for me, then don't hmm. attach to the don't attach to the action, fruits of the result. Or the you know, results of your action. Sorry, I misspoke. So don't get so that's so current follow tagam here is basically one is working for Krishna all the time, which is very difficult. Hmm. And he says that okay, then you work, but don't get too attached to karma phala. So that brings us down very uh, a stage of niskam karma. So if I go back to this slide, this is talking about this Niskam mm -hmm. Karma 1. Okay, Prabhu? Okay. So this, this so from here, the steps begins. But then he says that uh, now, if one is just engaged in some sort of action mm -hmm. and not knowing the goal, then that's not good. You know, it's better that you act and act with some goal. So from twelve, it little it, the 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 way things are presented is changing now. It's shifting now. Mm -hmm. So in twelve verses says that if you cannot uh, know 
because in verse 10 and 11, gold is still Krishna, okay? Mm. It's clear, Prabhu? This 10 yeah. and 11, mm -hmm. it is still gold Krishna, mm. okay? But 12 mm. here is talking that now you are completely lost. Mm. And you have no goal. You don't know who is who, who is what. Mm -hmm. Then says that a better Tamsama Jyotirgamya. Then have that knowledge, at least some knowledge. Mm. That okay. You might not you, you might not be able to get there, or you are not following the standard, but at least have that knowledge that uh, Krishna is the ultimate reality. And then Whatever you are doing, you do for that person. It comes even lower now, very low. You know, like you will see mostly people who are engaged in a sakam karm yoga, you know. They do everything mm. for their benefit, but they go to holy places and do something, something, right? There is still, you know, person who have the opportunity to become pure devotee. So add that jnana part. And then he says that dhyan is better than jnana. And then mm. again, it comes back to same stage where sarva karma phala tagam or dhyanat karma phalam tagam. If you have renounced the fruits of your action, then you are qualified again to perform dhyana or jnana. So let's look at this slide. So Niskam Karmi Yoga type 2 is for purification of heart, okay? After once has purified the heart, so at this stage, Prabhu, at this mm -hmm. stage, once purification has happened and one is now ready to act for once goal is clear now, okay? So they can mm -hmm take the process of Nishkam Karma Yoga at the higher stage and still follow the Gyan Yoga. Mm -hmm. Okay? Or one can follow Gyan Yoga only, mm -hmm. which is basically limbs of... What is the uh, action in the Gyan Yoga stage? There, the person is basically analytically trying to understand, you know, what is superior, what is inferior, what to be done, what not to be done, intelligence, you know, okay, this is good, I need to do it, it's bad, I'm not going to do it, okay? So, one is, once existence is purified, heart is purified, so he can see things as it is, then he can perform Gyan Yoga. That's what the order given. And higher than Gyan Yoga is a Stang Yoga, but once your heart is purified, you can either engage in Gyan Yoga or you can engage in Astang Yoga, but Astang Yoga is superior than Gyan Yoga. Gyan Yoga is goal of Niskam Karma Yoga, but if you are merely engaged right here, hmm. then it's better for you to have a goal and what is that goal? So at this stage, goal is this one. That's mm -hmm. what it's being said here. That focus. You know, just unnecessarily working and not knowing what is the goal. It's better if you have the goal. And then if you work with that goal, then slowly again, this thing will manifest in your life. This ladder will work. Okay? From Sakam Karma, since you have a goal now, you want to engage in Gyan Yoga, then you will strive for Niskam Karma Yoga, where you will try to purify your heart. And at that stage, the limbs or the action that you are going to take is Varnasam Dharma. But so here... So can you say, Prabhuji, yeah. that there are two levels of Tyaga? Or yes, levels. yeah, yeah. There are so multiple one, level of tyag. Yeah. So uh, one is at a, at when I am at an animal propensity yes. level. So then yeah. I do something. I donate sure. something to the temple. Sure. 
And you cannot then, become okay. devotee if you don't do tyaga. Yeah? Some tyaga has to happen based on adhikar. Right. right. Yes, yes, yes. So continue, uh, that continue. Gives You're me right. Purification and gives me to a level of second yes. level of tyaga. Yeah. Right. I, tyaga I, has I, to I, happen I, all the time. Yes. Right. <clears throat> tyaga will happen, Prabhu, at every moment, Prabhuji. So the tyag in the verse number 12, 12 is the second level of tyag. Higher tyag. Yes. Yeah, this is karm phalam tyagam. This is niskam karm yoga. Mm -hmm. Where now you are purified. Or you have, I know. But tyag has to happen at every stage. Mm -hmm. Karm kandi, who are completely engaged in sense gratification, they have to renounce the gross mm -hmm. activity, right? Mm -hmm. And only do the activity which are prescribed in Veda, Sakam yeah. Karmi Yoga, right? Now, mm -hmm. Sakam Karmi Yogi has only prescribed duty, but he is doing for his own benefit to go to the heavenly planet or to get opulence. He does not have goal. So let's fix the goal. What is the goal? By engaging, by not attaching with the fruits. Sakam Karmi Yogi is very attached to the fruits, the return. So you tag your foot. Mm -hmm. Don't worry too much about karmanya vadi kare Don't worry too much about your I know, result. Just act. That's also tag. Mm -hmm. Then this Kam Karmi Yoga stays if you come. Then now you are purifying your heart, following some you know prescribed duty at the higher order, with the objective to go to Gyan Yoga. So there will be always you know some degree of you know devotee. As a devotee, don't you think that we are doing some tyag, tapasya? Some degree of hostility, right, has to happen. Mm -hmm. So that's my understanding. So that will keep on changing. Following the four regulatory principle is also some degree of the Pashya, some degree of tyag that one has to do. I, I was thinking uh, the please, please. the focus on me is to to reduce the focus on me and turn it to you kind of thing, right? So, turn it towards Krishna. To turn it towards Krishna. So that's the uh, goal. That's the goal. Yeah. So tyag means have... ultimately everything is on Krishna. Nothing is mine kind of thing. Ah. Uh -huh. Tyag, ultimately, the ultimate tyag would be that, you know, I'm doing everything for Krishna. But it's very high to come to that stage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Slowly and slowly, right? Mm -hmm. If you are doing it, then you are awesome. You are all set. No, no. I'm, at this time, I'm just trying to understand it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Anybody has anything? Uh, Prabhuji, one quick question. So, yes, asma, asma, Asmanatmaka Bhakti, you explained. Mm -hmm. Can you please little more, um, uh, throw a little more explanation on that one, Prabhuji? I know. Uh, so, we, Asmanam we... Atmika Bhakti. Asma, Asmanatmika. Asmarna, yeah, Asmarna, remembrance. remembrance. Yeah. So, 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 so Asmarna means like remembering the Krishna. So, that is. Sam Sundar but... form. Vishnachi yes. Thakur says, remembering the Sam Sundar form of. Krishna. So exclusively all the time remember Samsundar form. Asmarnam means remembrance. But that remembrance doesn't happen until one is pure. Is it Nasmaranam Prabhuji? The, 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 I'm As trying to understand Asmarnam. Yeah, Asmarnam. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's Asmarna. Yes, that's the word. Yes, oh, you're right. Okay. So it's not Asmarnam complete word, but Asmarna, Asmaran, Asmaran. Remember? Right? Yes. Okay, so Smaran yeah. only, there is no, okay. I was I was a little bit confused. Asmaran. Uh, no, as, no as, as, Asmarna, 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 Asmarnam. Sanskrit Smaran, word. Okay. Yes. Okay, so it's okay. coming from Asmarnam, you are right. Asmarna Atnika Bhakti means Asmarnam, remembrance of Krishna. So okay. that's what he said. So you know that the uh, remembrance of Krishna is difficult, right? That's the goal we want to get at. Is it not right? Is it not correct? Yeah, yes, what sir. I say? That's the place where you want to go, right? We want to go, right? 
Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult. Very difficult. The verse is also ninth chapter, last verse, and actually 18th chapter also the same verse is repeated twice, right? Aprovijit yes. Oh. Yeah, it's very difficult remembering Krishna all the time. We don't remember Krishna all the time. You know? And he said, if you cannot remember, then fix your intelligence. But if you cannot do either of these, then do a vyas for that. These, these are internal. Okay, you cannot do anything? Then just work for me. Who is working for Krishna? We are working for Krishna. <laughs> Sannyasis are working for Krishna, right? Right? The sannyasis in our movement, they're working for Krishna. If they are working for Krishna. And I said, but that's also hard. We are not sannyasis, we are girhasta. <laughs> we have family, we have job, we have other responsibility. Then he says that, okay, then don't get too attached to your results, fruit of action. Okay? Why? Because dhyan is better than jnana. And you, sh you should not act not knowing your goal. So you have to do some degree of sacrifice to come to this stage, to this higher stage. That's very you know, essential summary of this section. Then Krishna talks about what are the qualities that develops when one is engaged in devotional service. 26 yes. quality of devotee. This one is going to talk 31 quality. You said something? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yeah. Prabhuji, sorry to disturb you. Uh, no, 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 it's not disturbing. I have a question uh, uh, regarding verse 12. So uh, you said Smaranam and Maranam. Uh, smaranam in the, in the Syam Sundar form, right? But if somebody uh, remembers Krishna in other forms, like uh, you know, different his in his different pastimes, uh, uh, in Kurukshetra or uh, you, you know, blessing different devotees like uh, Prithu Maharaj and all, all other Maharajas, if we remember those activities of Krishna, then it, will it be considered as maran, uh, Mananam or? Smaranam. So other forms of Krishna? Mm -hmm. That's no, the uh, essential question? or Yes, the Shyam Sundar form, uh -huh. other than Shyam Sundar form, Krishna, remembering Krishna in action, like, you know, blessing different devotees in different ways. So when we don't, when we remember Krishna in different other activities, will it be considered oh, as yeah, Maranam? Yeah, yeah. So Manam? like Krishna killing the demons? Demon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Asmanam. All of that is Rupa Goon. Krishna's Roop, Krishna's Goon, Krishna's name, Krishna Leela. There's four things. Name, form, quality, and pastime. All of yes, these yeah. is equally powerful. These are the ways to remember Krishna. But, you know, Samsundar form here means uh, Radha Krishna, you know, Radha form, Krishna's form. Krishna as a 16 years old, you know, boy with flute in his hand, his pastimes. So yes, remembering Krishna's killing uh, demons, all of that is his pastimes. And that will be smaranam. Any anything related to Krishna will be a smaranam. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hard, but yes. That's very higher stage. This is the example, remembering the form of Sam Sundar. It's signifying here that Krishna's feature, form of Krishna. Anything? In the purport of that verse also, Prabhuji Manmana Bhamad Bhakto, so Prabhupada says that not any form, any other, even including Lord Rama's form also. Let's focus on Krishna's form. That's yes, like, uh, yes, yeah, Krishna's so form. And, uh, you know, sometimes with due respect, many people might get a little bit 
off why only krishna why not but don't get like don't don't you know pay attention to those things at due course of time we'll understand why krishna krishna there is a reason you know that prabhupada is again and again saying supreme personality of god it supreme personality of god it our acharyas are saying supreme personality of god it supreme personality of god it there is a reason behind it he is a supreme person you know layers after layers after layers after layers after layers there are so many curtains you know so we have to remove those curtain through our bhakti to see where krishna is situated how he is situated where he is who oh, he is so yes krishna's form good enough okay i think we already uh, but i'll just go through some of these verses so 13 to 15 at least i can introduce so now we saw about bhagwan and we saw about the bhakti the steps in a very concise summarized way so if you are doing bhakti this quality should manifest and krishna is saying that these qualities are very dear to him yo mad bhakta same priya so you become very dear to krishna what he is saying advesta sarvabhuta nam maitram karuna eva cha nirmamo nirhankara sham dukha sukha chami so advesta sarvabhuta nam see here not envious towards anyone very important not in bias matram friendly to all karuna kind and merciful to all this these qualities are dear to krishna now if you don't want to pay attention to that i don't want to manifest this quality that's fine you are not dear to krishna we are not dear to krishna but this is that's why you follow the four virtue principles because it gives that friendly lesson you know merciful nature so advesta sura bhutana matram karuna eva cha nirmam nirahankara sham dukha sukha chami equal in happiness and distress and forgiving and tolerant chami the one who can forgive others santushta satatam yogi always satisfied yatatam dridha nishchaya self control and working with firm determination श्रद्धा शब्द विश्वास निश्चय नो डाउट फॉर्म डिटर्मिनेशन मैया अर्पिता मनोबुद्धि अगेन बाय ऑफरिंग माइंड एंड इंटेलिजेंस ऑन मी यो मद भक्त समय प्रिय सच डिवोटी ऑफ माइंड इज वेरी डियर टू मी कृष्णा इज सेइंग ऑल ऑफ दिस क्वालिटी हु हैज डेवलप्ड आर वेरी डियर टू कृष्णा यशमान no dvijate loko no one is agitated by him sometimes we don't understand that part is it like i am right it's not about right not about wrong shastra is teaching yashman no dvijate loko no body is agitated lokan no dvijate shaya no do is this is basically if you sandhi bichhed it no udvijite na udvijite if you merge it together it becomes no dvijite lokan na udvijite shaya and he is not it is agitated by any none of these things none of this harsham arsha bhayo udveger mukto yasha chame priya equipoised both in harsha happiness and fear and anxiety such a devotee is very dear to me so if you want to be dear to krishna these are the qualities he is asking us to have okay so i see mata ji has raised hand i thought that i can finish this chapter today but we'll do it later next week we'll just quickly touch upon this and then move to oh that's fine we'll just finish this chapter and then talk about exam yes mata ji please go ahead because to do this so No one hesitated by him, he and not hesitated by anyone. Yeah. So 
see uh, okay he is uh, he is in that level maybe he is not in years friendly to all and all yes whatever others do for him he may not hesitate on anything that yeah. makes sense but others are depends on again others consciousness right so some people may uh, feel like whatever uh, i mean it depends on that right so how can we say i mean how can we uh, understand this no one is hesitated by him means he uh... yeah that's the symptom of advanced devotee he is matured enough to understand how he should act. So, he, I mean, that's the gap. That's the step where I have to get or anybody else has to get. That's the teaching. So we have to come to this stage by reforming our behavior so that we are not being cause of agitations in anybody's mind. And, and I can tell you one thing, okay? What happened? I, this is just uh, one example. Uh, I saw one devotee and I could not, you know, give enough time to talk to him. It suddenly came to my mind, you know, that that person might be thinking why he, he didn't talk to me and all of that. I thought I might be becoming the cause of agitation. I write to call him. Text him and say, Prabhu Hare Krishna, sorry, I was so busy, I didn't get time. He said, no, 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 I know you are very busy. Uh, I was not expecting that, that. But I thought that maybe I would be, I'm not trying to say that, you know. But thing is that you have to slowly and slowly reform and think some of these things. You know, it might, sometimes uh, it's hard, very hard. Very difficult, you know, in the material world to manage because you are, you are, you know, living with people of both sides. You are living the people who are not as advanced as you are, and you are living with the people who are very advanced. So now you are in the middle of both. How you act, you know, both side. So that all comes with uh, due course of you know practice, and uh, but that's the standard. We should not be cause of agitation, you know. Right now, there is fight going on. People are scared to death, you know. You don't know what will happen at any time, you know. So this is a very high stage. Sometimes we get to mocked up. I don't like this thing. I don't like that thing. But teaching is here that you're liking or not liking. In both situations, it should not be disturbed. That's what it's being said here. That's what it says. So, Samasukha, yeah? Samasukha, Dukha, Sukha, Chama. Please read these verses. This is very powerful verses. And always, you know, meditate on this thing. Remind ourselves. So, that's what the requirement, Mataji. You should not be cause of anybody agitation. What you were, what was your intent of the question, Mataji? You were trying to know this or something else? That how we can be not the cause of agitation of somebody or how to watch that? Yeah, see, normally hesitation is depends on their consciousness. Sometimes whatever uh, maybe the opposite person is in good 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 intention, but still people will feel. So that's where I ask this question, Prabhuji. Yes, yeah, because, if there is something. Uh... Because it's all because my qualities. Because it's not yes, real, yes. then you are not being culprit for that, right? I mean, people carry their emotions. So if it's not real, if somebody perceives you something wrong and gets agitated, which you are not, then at the course of time, you can explain. That's not a uh, cause of penalty. I see what you are saying. Yeah, if somebody can perceive you wrong, what you can do about that? Can you do some? You cannot. The material world is. But as long as deliberately, you should not be the cause of agitation. That's the point. Yeah, I think that's what I'm also thinking, Prabhuji. So, uh, usually, either actions or by words, if you are doing intentionally or purposefully, that is one side, right? Yes. Um, is a, a natural way happens like accidental or something like that that is different yeah. 
and uh, you're right yeah. and again, i mean again, accidental if something happens what you can do mataji you have no control the intention yeah intention is the deliberate thing is that that is a but if point. you come to know then your seriousness is that you make it clear sorry if it caused any disturbance that was not my intent i just wanted to express whatever you wanted to but if it reflected that way i'm so sorry for that then personally understand that yes okay mata ji so we have uh can i just finish this today or it's too late i can take 5 minute read just can we do later prabhu ji my wait list we can you have some examples on these things yeah these are all very good qualities but yeah if you have some examples from any pure devotee some more well have oh pa this example all the pure devotees are example they acted exactly on this standard acharyas exactly acts on this standard these are the quality of best now so who is best now the one who possesses this quality so any best now has this quality we have to, we are striving for coming to these qualities so by reading it and uh, again mananam contemplation trying to do that slowly and slowly it will manifest in ourselves but uh, narad muni is example of it all the great vaishnavas are example of it aktivna thakur is example of it santa swami is example of it there are many acharyas who acted now we can tell some story but that will you know take too long and question uh, prabhu ji mananam smaranam what is, what is the this difference prabhu ji can you please uh, mananam smaranam both are s- identical right saranam so, not saravanam mananam smaranam yeah mananam, mananam is uh, contemplation meditation smaranam, smaranam. and smaranam is so if contemplation is done then remembrance comes if mananam is done then mannam okay. results to asmarnam okay so that's what is the, if you look at this order basically it's talking about mananam and then asmarnam if you go from down sadhana bhakti which is saranam then it goes to mananam and then it goes to asmarnam that way also you can see Um, okay. does sma- i think does um does smaranan mean like a like a remembrance in yeah. sanskrit okay yeah remembrance all the time right remembering all the time okay so sh- in during sadhana bhakti one of the limb is hearing so when we hear then that brings to the stage we are always meditating mananam and then if the saranam and mananam is perfected then it will lead to a smarnam which is always remembering krishna 24 by 7 this kind of naturally happens uh, yeah can... naturally happen so the result of a smarnam is perfection of the mananam hmm okay yes that's what so that's why krishna saying that if you cannot do a smarnam then mananam if you cannot do any then i start with you know sadhana if you cannot do then it is basically coming down so you can go also from uh bottom to top so top on is top top to down or bottom to top that's the order that's why it's presented in 8a b like that it's just order coming down good i really appreciate you all asking questions i really like that because if you ask that means you are perceiving something or there is some doubt coming which is pretty good sign 
that means you are at least you know trying to sync with the message that's given here so any point of time please do not hesitate asking any questions that you have i do not uh, really mind interrupting me in the middle of the class it's very important that we ask question but also i would like to tell you one thing which i, I wanted to tell in the beginning so uh, i'm not detouring i don't detour which means i don't go off and uh, give a lecture because this is not a lecture this is this is course designed for devotees and uh, this is a study course so i have to adhere with the content if i give the lecture type of class then it will be like four years but i have you know i would like to finish that at least year and a half two years the most that's how it goes but at least as you are studying this course giving the exam you would know where is what and then when you are teaching preaching if you have to refer back to some of these things you can come back oh here krishna is talking about bhakti here krishna is talking about bhagwan here krishna is talking about the devotees like that so this you know type of layout flow from chapter 1 to chapter 2 to chapter 2 to 3 like that those are the uh, objective of this course but uh, detouring and going and taking multiple examples that we do when we have sunday classes or when we have bhagavatam classes or when we have some other format of setup where we are like bhakti vriksha or other in bhakti vriksha i'll just take one verse and talk in that hour but this is this is bhakti shastri course it's a study course so this is designed to study systematically which means go through the verses and all of that so just wanted to also share that to all of you you might feel like that you know why prabhu is always moving from one verse to another verse because of the objective that is set up with this course good enough just one thing to share prabhu ji so please um, share so this chapter is as you are saying very important chapter yeah as you are getting so many points and we can meditate uh, a lot so this 12th chapter 15th chapter in a japa kal every day uh, we we recite parman hotobu ji is very actively in that kal also mata ji recite this 15th chapter and 12th chapter every day uh, in the japa kal so, oh really yes, what about this Ma oh, at your area. center at your yatra yeah this is a zoom call we have every morning uh, at 4:15 and uh, 6 until 6:30 japa goes on and the 6 6:15 and 6 15 uh, we read the quotes and then uh, 15 cha 12 chapter and 15 chapter narsimha kavacha every day uh, chapter a day is a chad no the same chapters same chapter 15 oh, chapter same chapter 12 chapter every day every day uh, mata ji is different mata ji would do uh, fridays prabhu ji would do and uh, manoh prabhu is also very active in that he is very great inspiration in the morning calls <laughs> you so, all are doing pretty good Yes, Prabhu ji. So, so day, one day he was giving Bhagavatam class. The picture that he sent me, I just zoomed in. I found out that it is Manohar Prabhu. Yes, he he did it. Yes, <laughs> Prabhu ji did it. So. Nice. You are doing pretty good there. That's very nice. Yes, please keep on doing that. It's all for our good, you know. Getting up in the morning. Today we had our uh, japa from five thirty to seven o'clock. in bhagavatam class we do it on every saturday but we don't do on other uh, weekdays but if you are doing about the weekdays on saturday you know we have a very at least i have a very busy schedule but uh, other day i follow what i have follow at my home my own you know schedule which is you know whatever i have been doing and uh, but we don't have association like you know prabhu jan mata ji is coming and chanting something together or giving bhagavatam class in fact bhagavatam should be every morning you know 4 o'clock we should get up by 6 o'clock chanting is done and then uh, we read something together by 7 o'clock bhagavatam class is done everybody takes prasadam go you know work right by 7 o'clock i don't think that i ever leave before 7 by 7 if the classes are done but uh, that should be you know really nice if you can do but nice very good manohar prabhu thank you so much for doing all of that yeah 
Yeah, Prabhuji started 12, maybe 12, 13 years ago. Japakal Prabhuji, it is been going on, but on and off. But these days, it is so regular for the last few years. 4.15 every day, 4.15 Mangalharati, Zoom call. Um, we do, yeah. More devotees have joined the group, huh? Yeah, yeah at least 10, 10 to 12 people joins uh, uh, until uh, six, uh, yeah, by 6. six and six, then you are doing Mangalarti also, right? Yes, on Friday? 415, 415. Uh, a devotee's house. Not devotee's house, Prabhuji. This is a Zoom call. One devotee. No, but the Mangalarti that you do when you do that. Yeah, once yes, a yes. month. That, yeah, no, no, that is every Sunday, every Sunday morning. Every Sunday, okay. Yeah, that's yeah, that itself is. Yeah, last Sunday morning, Manohar Prabhuji hosted, so we had the program at his place. And uh, how many people come? Uh, at least maybe, Prabhuji, at least 30, 30 35, sometimes. It oh, really? Yeah. Prabhuji, Manohar Prabhuji. So, Manohar. Yeah, now it has gone down a little bit, but uh, 25, 30 people were there last week. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice congregation you have. Very good. Yeah, if devotees are coming in the Mangala Arti, that's very nice. You know, that itself is a tag, you know, somebody getting up in the morning, driving down to somebody, especially in Minneapolis, I know it's very cold. A lot <laughs> of it's snowing. So someone doing like that, whoever comes, you be very thankful to them and feed them nice prasadam. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because they are not ordinary person who are, you know, in winter time driving. Coming. Yeah, he, he fed very nice prasad and he made a special, nice. uh, yeah, special dishes for us. So, so. <laughs> Sorry, I should have stopped sharing the screen, but thank you so much. No, I'm very excited to hear this. And please uh, let me know if I can serve anyways. I'm trying my best to give you the message that's presented in the uh, chapter. I'm sure not detouring and not going you know out and bringing a lot of information because that way it will take uh, years to finish but we can offline talk if you have any questions anything more you would like to discuss is good enough now for today please keep your uh, calendar blocked for this class 11 to 12 on every saturday and uh, let us do it together if anybody is interested to join I'm going to start the next batch soon. Every year in the beginning, I start next batch. So Prabhu, Manohar Prabhu, if anybody in your group, community is interested. Yeah, actually, to some people have shown interest, uh, Prabhu. So we'll spread the word. When are you starting? Uh, that? No. Early next year. next year, yeah. Early next year. Okay, so we'll get them ready. So that, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I can, I'll be more than happy to serve them. Also, disciple course, if somebody wants to take disciple course and mm -hmm. uh, get ready for initiation, okay. that I can also do. Yeah, we'll uh, and, uh, spread the word. These courses are designed for devotees. So I'm really not looking for, you know, too crowded class, mm -hmm. five, six devotees, because you all are teachers, you know, you all are teachers and preacher. So working with you, is a privilege for me because you all can teach and preach whatever, you know. That's why I try to be more technical and more on scientific side rather than going and telling so many things and you're not getting the essence of the chapter. So this chapter talks about Bhagwan, Bhakti, and Bhakta, mm -hmm. which is devotional service. So likewise, you know, I try to crunch as much as I can to give you the essence of the chapter. But thank you so much. I uh, appreciate your participation today. Vanchkal Pataru Vesha, Kripa Sindhu Vaya Vasha, Patitanam Pavane Viva, Vaishnava Viva, Namunu Mahesh, Ambal Bhakta Vrindaki Jai. Dandat Pranam Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.